While everyone can name Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Bill Gates as the richest men in the whole world, asking them to name the richest women in the world is either going to leave them speechless or have them mention Oprah and Rihanna. Surprisingly, however, Oprah and Rihanna are nowhere near the richest women in the world and even Jeff Bezos' ex-wife, Mackenzie Scott, was barely able to make it to the top five. So who is the mysterious richest woman at the very top of our list? And how have all these women amassed their fortune? And most importantly, how do they spend it? Let's find out. At number seven is Suzanne Clatton. Starting off today's list is Suzanne Clatton. Suzanne Clatton has a net worth of $23.7 billion and amassed most of her wealth from her inheritance. Suzanne owns almost 20 BMWs, the German manufacturer of luxury vehicles, is the sole owner of Atlanta AG, and also holds key positions in SSSGL Group. Although most of her fortune is a result of her BMW shares, however, Suzanne hasn't been sitting around doing nothing. Using her skills instead as an economist, thanks to her MBA, Susanna transformed Atlanta AG into the pharmaceutical giant it is today. Suzanne doesn't use her wealth to buy flashy cars like Elon. Instead, she buys real estate and focuses on being a better managerial figure. Many believe that we are permanently sitting around on a yacht in the Mediterranean. Clatton once told Germany's manager magazine in a rare interview with her younger brother. The role as a guardian of wealth also has personal sides that aren't so nice. Her brother Quaint said for both of us, it's certainly not the money that drives us, said Quaint. Above all, it is the responsibility of securing jobs in Germany. It's always nice to hear that there are billionaires out there making an impact and trying to make a place for a better world. At number six is Miriam Adelson, the richest Israeli in the world with a net worth of $25.4 billion and a rags to riches stories to match, which makes her such an inspiration. Miriam Adelson was born in Palestine and after studying microbiology and genetics, she decided that she wanted to become a doctor too. All this happened in New York and it was in the United States that she met her husband, Adelson's husband, Sheldon Adelson who was a business tycoon, but it was Miriam's idea to turn one of his buildings into a Venetian-styled casino, which is what really made him a billionaire. Sheldon used Miriam's idea and turned it into a $48 billion empire. Some of you might know this casino, the Sands Casino in Las Vegas. After Sheldon's death, half of this insane fortune became hers, and boy, did she use it the way that she wanted to. Miriam is a strong supporter of Israel and she has given hundreds of millions of dollars to right-wing politicians and groups to help Israel reach its goals. For example, in 2020 alone, she gave a million dollars to GOP campaigns and PACs. Of course, such efforts have not gone unrewarded. The couple recorded a big win when former President Donald Trump relocated the American embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Trump also awarded Miriam a Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2018. Miriam likes to spend her wealth on charities and to help people. For example, she's been an active donor in clinical research against addiction. In 2003, she established Dr. Miriam and Sheldon G. Adelson Medical Research Foundation, which supports innovative medical research. The foundation has awarded more than $180 million in grants to date. At number 5 is Gina Reinhart. With a net worth of $28.6 billion, Gina Reinhart is the richest woman in Australia and has gained the majority of her fortune through her control of Hancock Prospecting, which, as you probably guessed it, she inherited from her father. Gina's father came upon his fortune by accident. Hancock was a farmer and a bush pilot. One day, while dodging a storm, he spotted red color leaking from a nearby gorge. He suspected that this might be iron, and upon further inspection, found iron ores with higher iron concentration than the ones found in the United States. After some political lobbying and a few contracts later, Hancock was making millions and billions in royalties. Using his millions, Hancock bought two newspapers and was soon making connections left and right. 
His empire, however, soon saw a decline as his health started to take a nosedive, and after his death, Gina had to rebuild everything. Nowadays, Hancock Prospecting is one of the most successful mining companies in the world and is responsible for most of Gina's wealth, unlike her father, who loved being in the public spotlight and used his newspapers to do just that. Gina shies away from being on stage and instead voices her opinions in her writing. She was once even banned from visiting Russia when she said that the war in Ukraine is a reminder that Australia should be more determined to build up its defenses. One of 121 people in Australia who have been indefinitely banned from Russia by the Kremlin's foreign ministry. Reinhardt has released a statement saying, Much as I have very nice Russian friends and enjoyed very much my two visit to St. Petersburg and would love to revisit, I would not wish to do so if not welcomed or if I have concerns for my safety. If speaking out in the manner above means I can never visit Russia again in my lifetime, well, so be it, she said. Now that is a strong girl boss right there. And number four is Mackenzie Scott. Perhaps the most successful divorce ever in history, Mackenzie Scott is the ex-wife of Jeff Bezos. She wrote on her Medium post that she is determined to give the majority of my wealth back to the society that helped generate it, to do it thoughtfully, to get started soon, and to keep at it until the safe is empty, she added. This work is ongoing and will last for years. Unlike most billionaire philanthropists that make a big deal out of their donations and use them as a way to get points with the public, Mackenzie Scott tries to keep her donations hidden and donates to schools helping underprivileged minorities. Scott wrote, People struggling against inequality deserve center stage and stories about change. They are created equally. Perhaps especially true when their work is funded by wealth, any wealth as a product of a collective effort that included them. The social structures that inflate wealth present obstacles to them, and despite those obstacles, they are providing solutions that benefit us all. It was reported that by June 2021, she had donated over $2.75 billion to over 286 groups in just six months. So far, Mackenzie Scott has donated $12 billion and more in the span of three years. From being broke to helping every person she can, Mackenzie Scott has come a long way. What a role model. At number three is Jacqueline Mars. I want you to think about this billionaire's last name. What does the word Mars remind you of? The planet or the chocolate? If you said chocolate, like me, we're both hungry and right. Miss Jacqueline Mars is the owner of the Mars Confectionery brand. Her grandfather started the brand and she inherited her fortune from the success of her brand's sugary blockbusters. Jacqueline Mars has a net worth of $43.4 billion and almost all of it was amassed using the Mars brand. McLean, a Virginia-based, closely held company that manufactures candy, M&M stickers, Milky Way, chewing gum, juicy fruit, Orbit Pet Chow, Pedigree Whiskers, and Packaged Foods, is also owned by her. Ben's Originals and Susie's, who is the true sugar mama in my opinion. The Mars brand had a revenue of $40 billion in 2021 and is considered the largest candy maker in the world. So chances are that every candy you like comes from Jacqueline Mars's brands. Her scandals, however, aren't as sweet as her candies. In 2013, she was involved in a car accident where she fell asleep behind the wheel. The resulting crash killed one person and caused a pregnant woman to miscarry. Jacqueline pleaded guilty to the misdemeanor. Surprisingly, no drugs were found in her system and it turned out to be just a case of bad luck. As to her spending, Jacqueline Mars is a pretty private person, and the only record of her private spending indicates that she is an avid supporter of Going Green and regularly donates to the League of Conservation Voters, an organization aimed at supporting the introduction of better environmental laws. At number two is Alice Walton. Alice Walton is the owner of Walmart, right there in her last name. You make the connection? If not, well, don't beat yourself up about it. Chances are even more weird name billionaires will join our list in the future, so you can try again with them. 
Now, as for our Walmart billionaire, Alice Walton, she has a net worth of $56.6 billion. Walmart is a $572.8 billion business. And while Alice Walton is a co owner of it, she seems to be more interested in other things. Instead of focusing on growing her Walmart wealth, she chooses to focus on art and her passions. Don't get me wrong, Alice isn't lazy and chooses to do nothing. She already proved her worth after she set up her own bank. After getting an MBA, she later sold the bank and decided to relax just a little bit. Nowadays, she likes to splurge seven digits on art pieces that catch her eye and has also donated tens of millions of dollars to fund community projects. Mostly, however, she just likes to lead a quiet life on her 3,200 acre ranch where she breeds horses. <laughs> Winning horses, that is. According to her, the secret to breeding great horses is the three B's bones, brains, and balance. And if you look at art, it shares some of the same qualities too. And number one is Francois Betancourt Myers. With a net worth of $65.4 billion, Francois Betancourt Myers is the richest woman in the world. Her family owns 33% of L'Oreal, and the entire amount is attributed to her because she's chairwoman of the family's holding company. Betancourt has written books on Greek mythology and also founded the Betancourt Schuler Foundation in 1987, which donates to science, research, humanitarian causes, and the arts. Details of her spendings aren't publicly available as the L'Oreal owner rarely steps into the public spotlight. However, the fact that her mother Lillianne Betancourt was a fan of lavish spending when it comes to gifts and did come forward during a 2007 trial. Francois Betancourt argued that her mother was being taken advantage of and people were using her weakened mental state to steal their inheritance. An out-of-court settlement was reached and the details of that are still unknown. If you liked today's video, make sure to watch my other video on the richest people in the world for the year of 2022. And as always, make sure you're being the lap of luxury versus standing in it.